Welcome to worship at Covenant Presbyterian Church. This is the worship service for December 13th, 2020. This is the third week of Advent as we wait for the coming of the Christ child. The third week of Advent, of course, is one in which we celebrate joy. And so with joy, we worship together. We come together as God's people, even while apart, because we know that the unity that we find in Christ brings us together and that the Spirit of Christ unites us as one. So as you worship today, I want you to take a second to close your eyes. Think about your church family. Think about the people who brought you to this church, the people who connect you to this church. Think of those faces. They are here with you. The Spirit of Christ is here with you wherever you are. Conjure those faces to your mind and say a prayer. Just a simple one, a couple words long. Thank you, God, for the gift of my siblings. Amen. And now as we worship together, Remember that great spirit that unites us all, the spirit of Christ who is to come. Let us worship God together. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, the season when we prepare ourselves anew for the coming of Jesus into the world and into our lives. Listen for God's word from the prophet Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless shall sing for joy. A highway shall be there and it shall be the, called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Thanks be to God for the words of Scripture. Last week we lit the candle of hope. And he lighted again today in hope of our Savior to bring Savior Jesus to bring new light and new life to the world. And we lit the candle of peace. And we light it again today to welcome the peace of Christ into our hearts, our homes, and across the earth. Today we light the candle of joy. to celebrate the joyful good news that God is with us in Jesus. Let us sing together. Come Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Savior of us all, the Prince of peace, he Let us pray together. Hold, holy God, in, holy Je God. in Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ, you give us joy. You do give us joy. Joy for us. Joy for us. And joy for the world. And joy for the world. Help us to make our homes, our neighborhoods, and our lives more joyful. Amen. 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 Oh, Christ, with heart and soul. 
feels like our days are long and dark and unknown. We confess that so often we lose sight of those moments of delight and those opportunities for action that follow a path that God has set out for us. We confess to when we are impatient, short-sighted, or selfish. We confess to when we forget to consider strangers as our neighbors and our neighbors as ourselves. We confess that sometimes, for moments, we lose sight of an arc that bends towards justice, an advent that bends towards the light of the world, and a God that makes all things new. And in the midst of it all, we do remember that we are beloved and forgiven and forgiven again. We remember and trust that there is a voice that speaks into these dark days, a voice of new starts and lightness. With joy, we extend that hope. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you. Please share signs of peace with those you're gathered with, with those in your family, your community, the strangers who are neighbors and the neighbors who we treat as ourselves. Peace. Hi everybody, I'm Jeremy. Are you as excited about Christmas as I am? I am so excited about Christmas. It's coming in just, I think 12 days. That is exciting. It's so exciting to celebrate Jesus' birthday, isn't it? Today in church, Pastor Jeff is gonna tell us about how Jesus is the savior he saved all of us. So it can be kind of confusing what that means for Jesus to save us. But fortunately, Jesus' parents, Mary and Joseph, will help us today to kind of figure out what that means for Jesus to be our Savior. How are you and the baby doing, Mary? Okay, the baby sure is kicking a lot in my belly. It's a long way to Bethlehem from Nazareth, and this donkey sure is slow. It is a long way, but we will be there soon. 
Even though it's far, it's kind of nice to go to the town that King David was from. He's my great-grandpa with 24 greats, or maybe 39 greats, depending on who you ask. Cool. Yeah, cool. Anyway, Mary, I've been thinking about something the angel told me. Oh, what's that, Joseph? The angel said that Jesus will be a savior. Oh, wow, that's amazing. I have a very important baby in my belly. So, do you think Jesus will be like a superhero? The angel who spoke with me said Jesus will be a king forever. So, maybe a superhero king? Maybe Jesus will save everyone by helping people become closer to God than ever before. Maybe Jesus will help people live forever with God in heaven. Maybe Jesus will show people how to help make things fair for everyone. Maybe that's what the angel meant by saying that Jesus would be a savior, Joseph. Mind blown. Yeah, maybe that is what the angel meant. Well, not much farther to Bethlehem now, Mary. Have I told you how I'm related to King David? He's my great, 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 oops, I lost count. Great, 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 great. Our puppet versions of Mary and Joseph didn't know what the angels meant when they said that Jesus would be a king and a savior. Now, in real life, we don't know exactly what Mary and Joseph thought about how Jesus would grow up to be a king and a savior. What we do know is that Mary knew that Jesus was a very, very, very special baby. And I think it's fun to imagine Mary and Joseph being really excited about their special baby and wondering about all the great things that Jesus was going to do during his life. Today, we understand Jesus as a savior, very much like the donkey thought of Jesus as the savior. Do you remember what the donkey said about that? The donkey said, maybe Jesus will save people by helping them become closer to God than they ever have been before. And maybe Jesus will save people by helping them to live forever with God in heaven. And maybe Jesus would save us all by teaching us how to love each other well and how to make things fair for everyone. I think that's a pretty clever donkey. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks for being with me, everybody. Listen now to the word of God from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 20 through 21. But just when Joseph had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, 
Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, did you realize, there's a bit of fun trivia here, that Advent is only four Sundays long? And this is somehow already the third. Now, you probably knew that, but honestly, when I was thinking about these candles, it really came as a surprise to me. Now, I am as excited for Christmas as anyone else. I want to stress that. But kind of secretly right now, I'm wishing we could have a few more weeks to Advent this year. Not because I want to delay Christmas, but because I'm, I'm finding some new and, and deeper meaning this Advent, you know, as we wait. In this season of waiting, it feels like the waiting for Advent um, has taken on new dimension. Now that being said, Christmas is coming and I am so excited. I hope that your halls are suitably decked and that your apparel is appropriately gay because tis the season. And for this third week of Advent, as we approach the lighting of the Christ candle, we are talking about who Jesus is. So far we've talked about Jesus as our King and Jesus as our Prince of Peace. Now today, we have the privilege of talking about Jesus as our Savior. And a Savior is exactly what the angels promised in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verse 11. The angels say, To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Now you know this story. It's the one that Linus tells in the peanut Christmas special. Um, but also it's one that we talk about on Christmas Eve, but I'm guessing we all know how Linus tells it too. And it starts like this. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. So the angels appear before these shepherds and share the good news that there is a savior born in the town of Bethlehem. Now we're told that upon seeing a throng of angels manifest in the sky, the shepherds were terrified, which is, yeah, I get that. Um, but then after the shock wore off, I'm sure there was some real confusion. Like there are a lot of people in this world and some of them are actually even important. So why are you coming to us here? Or like, well, Bethlehem makes sense. Bethlehem seems like a good place for the savior to be born, but, but wait, a manger? Uh, I don't know about this, something doesn't add up. But that's the beauty of the Christmas story. It's so familiar to so many of us, but we need to remember that at its core, it is a shocking story about one of the most, about the most important person in history being born into oppression in a humiliating situation. And in that situation was born our savior, the one about whom the angel told Joseph he will save his people from their sins. So what is it to be saved from our sins? Is it that we don't ever suffer the consequences of, of our sins? Now, traditionally, the answer is yes, on a cosmic level, our souls will not face the cosmic consequences of our sins. But in a tangible sense here, our salvation through Christ doesn't mean that we won't face our own consequences from our sins. Like, you can't go before a judge and say, I'm sorry, Your Honor, but I've been saved. So, sorry about that. Like, that's not going to hold up in a court of law. Now, does this saving mean that we're saved from committing sins again? No. I could point to a laundry list of evidence that proves otherwise here, and that's just me from the past week. Does it, save, does it mean that we're being saved from being hurt by other people's sins? Now that's, that's a ludicrous proposition. We are all reaping the, the consequences of other people's sins every day. But there is another way that Jesus saves us from our sins right here on earth. On a very personal level, we turn to Jesus as Savior as he shows us the way to live. We're saved from our sin on an individual level when we listen to the words of Jesus, when we listen to him calling us on paths of righteousness. 
And when we earnestly pray, as he taught us, lead us not into temptation. Pastor Adam Hamilton of uh, Church of the Resurrection in Kansas City, who wrote, he wrote a book called Incarnation. Um, part of the basis of this sermon series comes from this book. And so when he talks about Jesus as Savior, he says, when the angel announced that Mary's child would save his people from their sins, we usually read that as pertaining to forgiveness. It certainly includes that, but even more important is Christ's transforming work in our lives, drawing us to God's path, strengthening us, and delivering us from our inner compulsion to sin. So as individuals, we are saved from sin whenever our faith, our disposition, our hearts, what that is that tugs on us, we are saved from sin whenever we listen to the words of Christ and are pulled closer towards justice and love and peace. And as individuals, it is important that we be saved from our sins, that we repent of the sins that we commit, and that we create in our own small ways, in our own small spheres, the kingdom of God in which sin has no sway. And so when I think of Jesus as Savior, I think of how important it is to turn to his example, not just in how he lived, but how he taught, in his highlighting of God's grace and forgiveness, his reminder for us to love our enemies, his his encouragement for us to love each other in radical and incredible ways, and in his admonition that we be willing to sacrifice of ourselves to show love to our siblings. He is our savior not only because he's God's incarnation come to earth to save us from our sins, but also because he lived a life that proves it's possible to be righteous. But we also need to remember, as the angel told Joseph, the angel said that Jesus will save his people from their sins. Jesus' saving grace is not just for us as individuals, but for us as a people. And quite frankly, when we look at it from that perspective, we stink. War, inequality, racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, xenophobia, uncontrolled greed, unchecked lying, the demonization of our enemies. Hopefully by now we're comfortable enough with that list of sins that we can earnestly confess that these are sins we commit as a culture, as a people. But how can we be saved from those sins? Well, in saving us from our individual sins, we are then, it then necessitates that we move to save all of us from our cultural sins, that we become the yeast that ferments the kingdom of God in the parts of culture that are mired in sin. If we let ourselves be transformed by the salvation Jesus brings and use that transformation to affect our world, it can be this mutually reinforcing salvation. So the more we shift our culture towards one of love and justice, the less temptation we'll face to buy into our continuing cultural sins. For example, if we work hard to make it culturally normative for corporations to treat their employees well, then it becomes a lot easier for, easier for us to avoid falling into the sin of compromising worker safety because we really, really want that two-day shipping. That as we become transformed, we then go out and transform. And the presence of Jesus being born in the way he was, born poor, born oppressed, born to an unwed mother, being attended by shepherds, that shows that God came to us with a special and specific identification with the class of people that the world would otherwise want to forget. This is a scandalous incarnation. And this scandalous incarnation shows that Jesus came to save us, yes, but also to give special love and attention to those who are victimized by ours and our culture's great sins. And now with this in mind, you can see two different dimensions in which we are saved from our sins, in which Jesus Christ is savior. The role of Christianity, as the saying often goes, is to afflict the comfortable and comfort the afflicted. 
I would say that the salvation that Christ brings follows this track. When the powerful and the oppressors become saved from our sins, when we are saved from our sins of power and oppression, then the oppressed find themselves released from bearing the brunt of those sins. So when Jesus saves us from our sins, he saves those who are suffering also the effects of those sins and saves us from having the stains of those sins on our souls, the, the, the guilt of victimizing people. So this is why it's important to remember that Christ as Savior comes to us as both as individuals and as a people. Because when we transform the culture to be one of justice, then the people who suffer the slings and arrows of injustice then become saved as well. We are saved. We are saved from our sins by God's self-giving act of sending Jesus to us. We are saved and that being saved from our sins, it produces results that bring about the kingdom of God. That being saved from our sins, if that is what we want, if we let that be how we operate, if we let the Savior work on us to save us from our sins, that gives glory to God and crucially honors God's image in our siblings. We're saved by God's act of sending Jesus. We are saved because God's presence with us shows the unending grace and forgiveness that allows us to be forgiven of our sins and freed to do good. But we're also saved from our sins when we allow Jesus' life and teachings to take hold of our lives. We're saved from our sins when we let Jesus transform us to become agents of change and righteousness. And being transformed by Jesus' saving mercy, we then transform the world. We go out, we do good, we pursue justice, we make peace, we advocate, we show God's love. As Christ's hands and feet, transformed by the saving mercy, saved from our sins, we bring the Savior even further into the world as we save each other from committing and suffering from our own collective sins. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, open our hearts. Make us people of repentance. Allow us to let you save us from our sins and give us the courage. Give us the power and the strength and the wisdom to identify those sins in our culture and help us to be transforming agents of the world, saving each other from our sins as well. Amen. We offer our gifts here at Covenant Presbyterian Church with the hope of making a difference in this community and even around the world. And I get to see that happening all the time. Thank you for your offerings, for your gifts, your time, your talent, your treasure that multiply in wonderful ways, serving God locally and globally. Many of you have been able to make a pledge for our ministry in the year 2021. Some of you have not yet, even those who have made pledges in the past. If you've let that slip or forgotten about it, I encourage you to go to the website or contact the church office so the leaders of the church, the session, can continue to plan for the year ahead. Our offering is about how we serve one another, about how we live out the fundamental ethic of our lives as Christians, the call to love our neighbors. So as we have this portion of our worship service, let me invite you to think about how you can offer yourselves this very day in service to your family, to your neighbors, and maybe even to the world. Let us worship God with our offerings. Let us worship God with the offering of ourselves to the world.
As we gather for a time of prayer today, let me share with you some new names on our church prayer list. Danielle Landwehr Brooks is a friend of Bob and Nan Schaefer. And we have a white rose today in the chancel to give thanks to God for the lives of loved ones who have died. This week, we remember Don Nappy, a friend of John and Linda Daly, Richard Schmidt, the uncle of Art Canitz, and we remember Covenant member Frank Balistrieri, who died last week from COVID-19. I invite you now into a spirit of prayer, and I'm using an adaption of the prayer that's on the back of our church prayer list. You can get a copy of that prayer list by contacting the church office. I invite you into a spirit of prayer. God of the ages, we praise you and thank you. For in the dawn of time, you created the world, sending light by your word to dispel the darkness. With the birth of Jesus Christ, you have come to us as King of Kings, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, and Savior. In Jesus Christ, you have begun a new creation, sending him to be the light of the world, to drive away fear and despair, and to give us hope in the darkness. We thank you and praise you and ask that you would give us strength to follow. Especially this day, God, we thank you for the order and beauty of your creation, for coming in Jesus Christ to share our human life, for the place you give us in your continuing creation, for the promise of peace among the nations and justice for all people. Mighty God, we pray that you would prepare the world for your rule as we long for the day when there would be no more crying or tears and when death would be destroyed. Help us to share the ministry of Jesus Christ and to be agents of his compassion. Especially today, we pray for the nations of the earth and peace across the world. Our nation in this time of political, economic, and racial turmoil families and individuals dealing with addictions, students, parents, teachers, administrators dealing with this challenging situation for education, those who are sick and suffering, those who are afraid and feel like there's no hope, people dealing with COVID-19, our families and our friends, And we pray for the church, O God, for covenant and for the church universal. Renew us in hope, peace, joy, and love. Let your light shine anew in our hearts, in our homes, and in our world, that we could faithfully proclaim the good news of your love with our words and our deeds. Hear our prayers, O God. In Jesus' name, amen.
joy. These are the three candles we've gotten lit so far. We're working our way to love and finally towards Christmas with the Christ candle in the center. But all of these things, in all of these things, we center Christ. That in declaring Christ as our Savior, we feel the peace that comes with being saved. We feel the hope that comes from a future in which sin does not hold sway. And we feel joy knowing that the work that we do as saved people builds the kingdom of God and shows God's love to our neighbor. So as you go forward this week, as you continue your Advent journey, as we continue to await the coming of the King, the lighting of the Christ candle, the birth of our Savior, go knowing that you are a saved person. And let that salvation enter your hearts and change your life so we can all work together to change the world. God's salvation is for all of us. Let us bring that salvation together outward. And as you go, you do not go alone with this. You go with with the community of believers, with the fellowship of the saints of this church, the fellowship of the saints of the church all over. And you go with the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit with you, now, this Advent, and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.